All right, now we're going to talk about an extremely important operation on vectors called vector projection. And this is going to come up over and over again in graphics. So what is projection exactly? So let's start with a vector. We'll call it U. So I'll pull my U over here. And let's pick another vector V that has the same origin, so the same endpoint. So there's my V. Pull that V over there. So the projection of U onto V is the shadow that U casts onto V. So what we do is we drop a perpendicular here. So that makes a right angle. And this is now the vector that we have. And I will call it U proj V. So that is my vector. Oops. That is the shadow that U cast onto V. Okay, so that's all the projection is. So in another way of saying it, it's, it's a component of U that's in the direction of V. Okay, now how do we actually compute this? Well, let's first just think about the length of this. So the length of this, so the magnitude of that vector, is equal to, well, so we have to look at this, and we see that it's a right triangle. So now we can go back to our trig. So let's say that this is an angle here of theta. And so what we can say is that the magnitude, so the length of this vector over the length of the hypotenuse is the cosine by definition. So cosine is, is, is adjacent length over hypotenuse length. So if we rearrange that, we say, well, the adjacent length then is equal to the hypotenuse length. So the length, the magnitude of u, which is the hypotenuse length, times the cosine of the angle between them. So the cosine of theta. Okay. So that is an equation for the length. Now, if we recall from yesterday, actually, the, there's a special formula that's kind of close to this. So remember, this is the dot product identity. So it says that the dot product of u and v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of the angle between them. Now, this is almost what we have here, right? This is almost the length of the projection. We just have an extra factor here. So we have an extra factor of v, so we need to divide that through. So what you can say is, well, this is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of v. So I'm just going to get rid of that factor. I can plug it in and divide that by the magnitude of v. Okay, so the length of this projection is equal to u dot v over the magnitude of v. Okay, so this is the magnitude of the projection that we're looking for. Now the direction of the projection is going to be in the direction of v. Okay, so we see that, that the projection is pointing in the direction of v. Uh, but what we want is we want a vector that's in that direction with the length magnitude. So the easiest thing to do is to figure out, okay, what's a unit vector in the direction of V? So a vector that has magnitude of 1. And so that actually, I'll call that um, Vn, so for V normalized. That's going to be V over the magnitude of V. So remember, this is a way that you can take a vector and turn it into... A unit vector, so a vector that's in the same direction but has magnitude of one. Okay, so that's my v normal there, v normalized. And well, okay, so I have a unit vector in this direction. This is my direction. And to make that, to get my u proj v. I just need to take the unit vector and multiply it by the scalar. So here's the length, and I'm going to multiply that length by the, by the direction. So if I pull this over here, that's going to be... 
So my u dot v over the magnitude of v times v over the magnitude of v. Okay. So this is an equation for the projection, and this will work perfectly fine. So there we go. So we've got an equation for the projection. But there's actually something kind of neat we can do with this. So this magnitude of v in the denominator here is just a scalar. So we can combine it with the scalar part on the left. And whoops, I gave away the answer there. Hang on. <laughs> um, okay, so all I have to do is just combine the like terms down there. And I end up with, oops, I was just trying to get an equal sign there. Um, you can simplify this down to u projected onto v is the dot product of u and v over the magnitude of v squared quantity times v. Okay, so my scalar is u dot v or magnitude of v squared times v. Now, the magnitude of v squared is actually quite interesting. So the magnitude of a vector squared turns out that's actually equal to the dot product of a vector with itself. And the reason is, let's just look at an example in 2D. So I just want to kind of get those arrows on there. So if I say, let's say let V be AB, right? Okay, so V dot V then is going to be A times A plus B times B which is a squared plus b squared. Um, well, that's actually the square of the magnitude, right? Because the magnitude is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if we square it, we cancel out the square root, and we end up with a squared plus b squared. So the magnitude of a vector, so here's, here's two identities that we were using together here. Number one, the dot product identity. Um, number two, this is... is the, we, I guess we'll call this the norm, or the, we'll call this the mag squared identity. So these two identities together, oops, I didn't want to fill it, there we go. These two identities together give us a very convenient way of reorganizing this projection formula. And so the last step actually is to apply that identity, and what you end up with, here's the magic formula. The projection of u onto v is u dot v over v dot v as a scalar times v. And this is totally amazing. And the reason is, because look, the original length of this vector had a cosine in it, right? And it also had a square root. But this final formula here doesn't have a cosine or a square root. All you have to do is do multiplication, addition, division, and more multiplication. So that's amazing. That, that means this is going to be extremely fast in the computer to do this kind of projection. All right, so the last thing I want to mention here, so that, that's the formula for projection. So let me clean all this work up. So you, see, you can back up and look at, the, look at this derivation if you want. But now we're just going to take this as a given. Um, oops, OK. So there's one more thing. So this, this is the projection. U proj v. Now there's another projection we can talk about, which is called the perpendicular projection. And this is what's left over. This, this is kind of the opposite of the shadow. So it's actually this vector here. So let me draw it again. It's the vector that starts at the tip of the projection and goes up to the tip of the original vector that was projected. Okay. So I'll call this u perp v. So this is the perpendicular projection of u onto v. And so notice that that u projection of v, so I can say that, that u is actually equal to the sum of u projected onto v plus the perpendicular projection. So that's going to be u proj v plus u perp v. Um, so actually, to get the formula for the perpendicular projection, all I have to do is, is just rearrange this equation and say, well, okay, well, the perpendicular projection then is u minus the regular projection. So u perp v is then simply the same equation. We're just going to minus it from v. Sorry, we're going to minus it from u. So u minus 
this is our perpendicular projection. Okay, and that's all there is to it. What it is, is really like determining a new kind of coordinate system for this vector, where the our new x-axis is the v direction, and our new y-axis is this perpendicular direction here. So we're decomposing it into two orthogonal vectors. Um, if v was the x-axis, this would just give us the x component. This would just give us an x vector. Um, of, of u and then the perpendicular would give us the y vector but in general we, we don't always have our coordinate systems that are axis aligned so this is gives us a really nice way to kind of come up with a new coordinate system on the fly okay so beautiful stuff no transcendental functions involved here this is super fast